Hello there. There is a new drink making its rounds on the internet right now. And this drink, of course, isn't necessarily new, but it is it is trending. So <laughs> we're gonna talk about it. And frankly, honestly, I'm a little bit late to this, but the last two months have been a little bit busy. Here we are today. We are tardy, but we're addressing it nonetheless. Now this drink is espresso plus orange juice. I was originally introduced to it uh, by Bun Daddy on TikTok. TikTok usernames are <laughs> hilarious. She said, put espresso in orange juice. She swore by it, said it was one of her favorite drinks and everyone else should try it. So I, of course, at the time that I saw the video, tried it. I posted it and I shared it. And this is what we did during that video. We uh, got some orange juice in my cup and we just got like a, a double espresso and shake up our orange juice. This is what everyone was saying to do. I just kind of poured an indiscriminate amount in a cup and we just added that. The color of this is not great. <laughs> this is not the most appealing thing I have ever seen. And it doesn't sound necessarily like it'll be delicious. However, granted, I'm using an orange juice that has a little bit of pulp in it <laughs> right now, but flavor-wise, this is fine. It is all right. I said this when I originally tried this out that I dislike how much I like this. That is not to say that it is delicious. However, it's all right. I think maybe it could be a little bit better if we put a little bit of thought into how we're combining the flavors of orange and espresso. So uh, clearing this all away, Today, I thought we would try our hands at a drink that takes orange juice, takes the idea of citrus, and also takes espresso and marries them in a very happy fashion. Because citrus and espresso very much go together. They're delicious, they're wonderful together. And I thought we should do a little rendition on this drink that is trending right now. This is not necessarily a replacement, but it's just kind of a, we're gonna remix it a little bit. So I'm gonna go grab all the ingredients we're gonna need today. In the meantime, I wanna give a huge thank you to our sponsor of today's video. I wanna give a huge thank you to Vessi for partnering with me on today's video. I've been wearing Vessies for quite a while now and they've fast become some of my favorite shoes to wear anywhere from my work to my everyday. I wear their weekend model all the time due to its low profile and comfortable fit, but they also have the everyday move model if you're into something just a little bit more sporty. However, since I live in Oregon, which is, if you haven't heard, quite the rainy state in the spring, I definitely have to talk about one of my favorite features of the shoe, which is that Vessies are 100% waterproof and made from a lightweight Dymatex knit material, meaning that when mistakes, spills, or even puddles happen, my feet stay dry. This makes them both the perfect barista shoe and the perfect everyday rainy weather shoe. And their herringbone tread pattern helps them be grippy and safe even when I'm slipping around the cafe. So if you want to match with me and get your own pair of Vessies for yourself or a loved one, I gotcha. Because Vessi is giving my subscribers $25 off your purchase when you click the link below and enter code Morgan. That's the link in the description and code Morgan. Thank you again to Vessi for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back everyone. Now we have the core ingredients of what we're gonna be doing today. Now I thought it might be nice to do kind of like a twist on like an espresso tonic situation. That's a, a very popular drink in a lot of cafes where you're using sparkling tonic water and then layering your espresso on top. Sometimes additionally, you will have some sort of syrup that pairs with it, but it's a very refreshing, very, very lovely drink. And I thought if we were to make some sort of like spiced orange syrup and then pair it with sparkling water and espresso, that would be a very lovely take on orange juice and espresso. So that's where we're starting here today. First of all, we have to address our syrup. I'm gonna be doing kind of a simple syrup base. So we're gonna be basically steeping all of our ingredients in like a two to one, like sugar to water mixture. And I'm starting off with two different types of oranges. We have cara cara oranges and we also have blood oranges because they're fun and they add a great pop of color. Both of these varieties of oranges um, are known to be on the sweeter side. They're not necessarily as as tart as kind of your, your standard like grocery store orange. Both of these varieties are pretty sweet. They're also pretty fruity. So I think we're gonna result in something that is very, very nice when paired with coffee. Then I'm gonna be using just a, a like a white cane sugar. I usually prefer adding just like a white cane sugar to my simple syrups, especially when I'm doing more like kind of heavier flavors. In this case, we really want this syrup to taste like orange. So just kind of a, a very standard base with our sugar here is great. We don't need to do like a brown sugar or anything like that. And then just to add a little bit more dimension to the very citrus forward syrup we're gonna be making, thought it would be nice to add like a little bit of spice to it. So two flavors that go very nicely with orange and citrus happen to be 
cinnamon, and also star anise right here. So in addition to steeping our two different types of oranges in our syrup, we're gonna be steeping these two spices as well. That's gonna be very fun, but we need to cut up some oranges first. This is my favorite part of a Morgan Drinks Coffee video is, is Morgan plays with knives. As you can see here, this is the inside of a blood orange. Pretty clear <laughs> why they call it that. The flesh of the orange is very, very dark in color. It's very, very pretty. Makes a delicious juice and or syrup. So we're gonna add this for color because in terms of flavor, this and the, whoops, that's another blood orange. This and the Cara Cara orange aren't super different. This is more like an aesthetic choice <laughs> more than anything else. Now you can sometimes make citrus syrups by just using the citrus peel and steeping that. However, we're going all in today. So we're going to be steeping pretty large circles of sliced oranges. So kind of like that. It's nice and thin. We're going to cut a bunch of these and I'm going to be doing equal parts of these two oranges. I promise I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I have a plan here today, people. Okay, so I have 100 grams of sliced blood orange right now. That was approximately one medium-sized blood orange. Now, for the Cara Cara oranges. You'll notice even on the Cara Cara oranges, these have a pretty different color than what you usually see in an orange. This looks a lot closer to the color of a grapefruit. So they're very, very pretty citrus fruits. And that is approximately 100 grams of Cara Cara oranges. So let's now get everything else we'll need. Let's get it weighed out. So if you're making this at home, you know what to do as well. As I mentioned before, I'm a little bit more partial to like a two to one ratio on my simple syrups, especially when I'm like infusing with something else that holds a lot of juice because, whoops. <laughs> These oranges um, are gonna release a fair amount of the juice that's held within their flesh. So we do need to take that a little bit into consideration when thinking about the amount of fluid that we're gonna be adding initially to our simple syrup. So that being said, we're gonna start off with we're gonna go for approximately 250 grams of our white cane sugar that means when we add our water we're gonna be using approximately 125 grams and then we'll also have some like kind of liquid giveaway from our fruits that we're adding as well I've got this adorable little uh, ceramic here I usually use it for soy sauce but in this case it's gonna hold our spices now we don't need a ton of either of these neither the the cinnamon or the star anise this is a lot about just kind of adding a little bit more dimension a little bit more flavor and rounding out the the bright acidity that's gonna come through with our with our oranges so as far as the star anise goes I think I'm just gonna use kind of three large pieces which is approximately you know what let's just let's go for four I like that an even number and that is exactly three grams of whole star anise. It smells so good. I will admit star anise is, is pretty expensive, at least when I've looked into purchasing it, but it is wonderful. It is a delicious, just, oh, it, it smells so good. I feel like I'm like fangirling over star anise right now, <laughs> but I really get to use it. So kind of fun to have that chance today. And then I'm just gonna use a uh, pretty much a whole cinnamon stick. I'm gonna break it up a little bit. This will make it very easy to fish it out when we are all done because we will be straining this syrup afterwards gonna kind of crack this in two. I'm gonna use about seven grams of whole cinnamon stick. And this is, these are Cylon cinnamon quills, if anyone is curious. All right, one final review. We have 200 grams of orange slices. These are equal parts Cara Cara oranges and blood oranges. We have approximately 250 grams of white cane sugar. We have 125 grams of water. This is also coincidentally the jar we're gonna be storing our finished syrup in. And then we have three grams of star anise and seven grams of cinnamon. So let's assemble. This is so exciting. Usually I would have to take you back to the stovetop. We'd have to do like a whole transition thing. However, I got myself a hot plate. We have to do like a little diagonal thing here. It'll be a little bit sideways, but uh, it comes with a very small cord. So make it do. Additional tools you will need is a saucepan. You don't need a huge one, small one will do. And some sort of stirring implement. Also something you can use to then fish out like the spices and the blood oranges when you're done. But let's get this bad boy turned on and just see what happens. I mean, like it should be fine. It's a hot plate. Nothing, nothing too terrible will happen, I don't think. Okay, so I'm immediately going to add my sugar. So I've added our sugar. We're also gonna add our water. And I want to make sure that our sugar is all melted prior to adding our blood oranges. We wanna add that after the fact. So just kind of leave it here. Keep an eye on it, don't let it burn. But our hot plate is gonna take a minute to get up to temperature. So just, just don't leave, stay here, stand here. Wait 
just wait for it. <laughs> if you don't, uh, you are in potential threat of a very nasty pan to clean later. It's kind of like like playing with like a sand structure. Like at this point, this is this is very satisfying. This is also so exciting. I love introducing new appliances um, to the to the MDC universe. Can I call it the MDCCU? Can I do that? Is that copyrighted? Sounds MDCCU? Like your, that sounds like you're a <laughs> it does sound a little bit like a credit union. You're <laughs> you're not entirely wrong. We'll work on the branding. We'll, we'll come up with something better. Start to feel the heat. It's poor phrasing on my part. It is melting. I, uh, I sound pessimistic. It is melting. Uh, we are making progress. And once this thing reaches temperature, uh, things will move at a faster pace. So that's exciting. There were a couple people who were kind of surprised to see me using as much citrus as I did uh, in my signature drink for the USBC. But I, I mean to I mean to encourage you that citrus and coffee goes wonderfully together. I mean, I was pairing orange blossom water and mango and like lime oleosaccharum all with coffee and it was it was delicious. So orange juice and espresso, of course, isn't bad together, but we're just, we're looking for like a fun little, fun little twist on it today. Okay, so most of our sugar has melted down at this point. It is, I'm not really scraping up anything. So we're gonna begin to add our oranges in here, which is very exciting. You may say that this seems like a lot of oranges. I would probably say that you're right, <laughs> but take into consideration that we are essentially looking to kind of replicate and or enhance what is essentially a drink that is 90% orange juice. So if we seem like we have have a lot of oranges in here today, I think that is fine. It is at this point that I'm also going to add our little cat plate full of spices. So just, just do that, let those begin to marinate. Now we just wait for a little bit. Again, keep a watchful eye, but uh, there's a little bit more leeway. Now this has to all steep together and I would probably give it, frankly, at a medium temperature, I would give this probably about 10 to 15 minutes. That is usually kind of my go-to time period for infused simple syrup. So I will see you back here in 10 to 15 minutes. Again, keep an eye on your syrup. Be careful with it. If it seems like it is boiling too much or reaching too high of a heat, don't be afraid to turn it down. That is totally fine. Okay, I'll see you soon. Okay, so it has been approximately 10, 12 minutes. We've had a nice rolling boil for a little bit. Uh, I'm now reducing the heat. There's a lot of steam. <laughs> I'm now reducing the heat back down to low just for a minute. I do wanna show you what the oranges look like. They're kind of soft and mushy, kind of kind of soggy. You can see the, the flesh is starting to break down. That's pretty much exactly where we want it. We don't want these completely falling apart. We do want them to be, to be pretty cooked through. So I, uh, Give me a second. You can use a cheesecloth if you have that. However, I uh, have a pretty fine sieve and a bowl. We're gonna pour this out and then separate all these like solids that we have in here from the final syrup. It smells so good right now. I will just say, uh, one should just make this as like, what is it called when you make like a steeping pot that just like makes your house smell nice? I'm forgetting the title of it, but you could just set this on your stove on like a simmer and your whole house would smell so good. Separate everything out. My sink is full of dishes. You can press very lightly just to make sure you've pulled out all of that kind of caramelized, simple and orange juice out of your solids. And then whoop, we are left with a syrup that first of all is a very, very pretty color. It smells delicious, it smells bright citrusy, but it also does have kind of like those deeper notes of star anise and cinnamon. So now all we have to do, we have to wait for this to cool, of course, and then we'll be ready for drink assembly. So let your syrup cool down, then we will be back shortly for the final steps. So let's do some assembly now because the star of our show, the spiced blood orange syrup is all ready to go. I mentioned before that espresso tonics uh, are kind of a, a similar way that citrus is sometimes incorporated into coffee. However, tonic water itself is sweetened. It has a lot of flavor to it. So I didn't want to go that direction because we're already adding sugar in the form of our syrup. So I was like sparkling water. We could just use like a, a club soda or a sparkling water. That seemed a little bit boring. So I stumbled upon uh, Topo Chico's uh, twist of tangerine. Not sponsored by the way, I just drink a lot of this stuff. So tangerine being another citrus, I thought would fit very nicely into this. So we have some espresso right here. Let's get creating. I will weigh everything for your, your edification. We'll start off with our syrup. I feel like I'm doing a lot of like under the brow looking at the camera today. So sorry about that. I'm gonna start with 20 grams of our simple syrup. This syrup is pretty sweet syrup. So 20 grams uh, for what is approximately gonna be around a 12 ounce drink should be plenty, if not a little bit too much, but I like my drink sweet. Feel free to adjust to your preference. I'm gonna grab ice next, I think. We're gonna use some nice, there's a good amount of nice large ice cubes. 
I'm very pro ice in an ice drink. I think more ice rather than less ice, less ice <laughs> is preferable. Less lice too. I mean, if we're, if we're talking about that, less lice, definitely. Clean up your mess as you go. Then it's time to add your sparkling water. Again, if you choose not to use Topo Chico, totally fine. I would just go for like a plain carbonated water. I wouldn't, I wouldn't add anything else that has either like sweeteners or like additional flavors besides something kind of citrusy. Additionally, don't fill this all the way to the top. Leave, leave, some, leave some room here. We're gonna be adding our espresso, which in and of itself is about an ounce and a half. But that being said, adding espresso to something carbonated can be a little bit dangerous sometimes. So we'll talk about that next. I would recommend giving your current drink a little bit of a stir just to make sure that syrup is completely incorporated with all your sparkling water. And then it's time to add your double espresso. Now, if you've seen espresso tonics created in the past or if you've made them, you'll know that when you add espresso over something carbonated, frequently there can be a reaction where it foams up far more than you expect it to and kind of explodes. It's very reminiscent of like those kind of like middle school or like elementary school volcanoes you would do with like baking, baking soda, powder, whatever it was, and vinegar. That's kind of what happens here. So kind of mitigate that as much as possible. I do recommend giving your espresso a good stir, making sure your crema is fully incorporated into the body of your espresso. And also pouring very gently. Do not pour this from a height. You want to kind of think of this as layering your espresso over top your sparkling water. And even with all all these precautions. Sometimes this goes terribly wrong. So fingers crossed here today. I'm like nervous. <laughs> Having had espresso tonic explosions happen to me many, many times. This is a, frankly a little terrifying. Just do it very gently. It's very pretty, very scary. We have avoided complete disaster here. Oh my gosh, look how pretty that is. I'm gonna add a little garnish of blood orange. And then, frankly, we're all ready to enjoy our drink. Now, after this has had a little bit of time to settle, then I will add a spoon and incorporate the espresso all the way through. And again, proceed with caution. This is liable to, to explode kind of at any point. Just uh, treat it gently, carefully. All right, I think we have very carefully achieved full incorporation. And now it is time to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Yes, I did spend upwards of 40 minutes making one singular drink. However, we do have quite a reserve of syrup now. So this drink can last us for quite a bit if we'd like it to. Cheers to you. Here's a take on oranges slash orange juice and espresso. Oh, it's so summery. <laughs> it is so lovely and refreshing. I think carbonated coffee drinks, I think citrus coffee drinks are all wonderful, wonderful things. And I think this is very lovely. And I hope if you would like to or are interested in, you get the chance to try this as well. And as we always do, we have to get Graham's opinion. I know you're not a huge citrus person, but this is kind of nice. Sure and it's not- He did if I was a huge citrus person. Oh, okay. All right. That's good though, it's subtle enough. It's good, right? For anyone who doesn't know, Graham, citrus is like the bane of Graham's existence, so for him to like it. It's good. It's good, yeah. <laughs> Success. The espresso helps. Now, uh, while this is not truly espresso and pure orange juice together, I think this is a nice little take on it. It's very, very enjoyable. So I will list kind of the recipe all below. This was, I kind of just pieced this together myself, and hopefully, if you have the time or interest, you'll be able to piece it together as well. So I enjoyed my time here today and I hope you did too. Now, as usual, I am Morgan Drinks Coffee pretty much everywhere <laughs> that I'm active. You can find me here on YouTube once a week, plus many shorts. You can also find me on TikTok or Instagram pretty much every single day. I'll have lots of other fun links down in the description, including uh, a link to today's sponsor. Thank you again to Vessi. If you would like to learn any more about them, they'll be the top link and then there'll be lots of fun stuff below it. So until next time, I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you very soon. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>